Hey guys, Kylie here. Welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be giving a review of Australia's biggest and most popular broker, Comsec. Comsec is best known for offering Australian shares, but it does also offer an international share trading account, options trading, and it has Comsec Pocket as well, which is the micro investment app that lets you invest smaller amounts of money from $50 into uh, a select range of ETFs. So Comsec is overwhelmingly the most popular online broker in Australia, but does it live up to the buzz? And how does it compare on fees and features with other online platforms out there? I'm going to take a look in this review. So I'm just going to start by giving a bit of a rundown on the main highlight features of Comsec. I think one of the big reasons a lot of people like to use Comsec is because it can connect to their bank account with Commonwealth Bank. Uh, Commonwealth Bank of Australia is Australia's biggest bank. So it goes without saying that um, a lot of people would trust its share trading platform Comsec. It also offers ASX chess sponsored shares. So chess is the uh, name of the registration system run by the Australian uh, Securities Exchange, ASX. It starts brokerage fees at $10 a trade. So every buy and sell order uh, starts with $10, but those fees do go up depending on how much you invest. Definitely one of the biggest strengths of Comsec are its uh, research tools. It's uh, availability of, of data that it has on various stocks as well as exchange traded funds. Um, it has stock analysis tools like you can see uh, broker ratings where the brokers think that a stock is a buy, hold or sell. It also offers watch lists. It has a long list of conditional orders, but I'll go into that in a bit more detail later. So I'm going to start by looking at the fees involved with trading on Comsec. OK, so I'm just going to open up the brokerage calculator that I uh, created just so I could better compare the brokerage fees across multiple brokers in Australia. OK, so brokerage fees, like I said before, with Comsec start off at $10, but that is only for uh, trades of $1,000 or less. If you go over $1,000 and up to $10,000, it costs $19.95 per trade. And then over $10,000 is $29.95 per trade. Over $25,000 of trades is 0.12% of your overall investment. So you can see the overall brokerage rates depending on how many times you trade in a year and your average investment size. So for example, if you were to make just one trade uh, a year of $1,000, it would cost you just $10, $10 in brokerage fees. But if you were trading larger amounts and more frequently, say you were making 30 trades in a year of $10,000 or more, uh, you'd be charged uh, $598 50 just in brokerage fees alone, which is a pretty sizable amount. And probably the two brokers that are most often compared to Comsec would be Selfwealth and uh, NAB Trade. So I'm just going to have a look at how these three brokers compare to each other. And then I'm just going to do a really quick run through of every other broker in Australia. It's really hard to keep track of brokers in Australia, but by our records, we have about 33 that are currently existing here. So when it comes to brokerage fees for ASX chess sponsored shares, uh, out of these three, Selfwealth is definitely the cheapest. It offers a $9.50 flat rate. So it doesn't matter how much you invest or how often you invest, you get charged the same rate per trade. NAB, on the other hand, is kind of in between Comsec and Selfwealth, depending on how much you're trading. So it charges $14.95 for trades of up to $5,000, $19.95 for trades of $5,000 to $20,000, and then 0.11% for anything over $20,000. So between Comsec and NAB, it really depends uh, what you're trading. Like if you were trading $1,000 often or less, say you're making $500 trades, then a Comsec would be the cheaper option. However, if your trade sizes tended to be more along the $2,000, to $5,000 range, then NAB trade is definitely the cheaper option at $14.95 as opposed to $19.95. When it comes to the really high trade amounts, um, you know, over $20,000 or so, uh, NAB trade is slightly cheaper. It comes down to 0.11% of your overall trade uh, comes out as brokerage fee compared to Comsex 0.12%. So you can see they're really competing quite closely there on that front. That's not necessarily going to be a deal breaker unless you're making very, very big trades and that small percentage is going to make um, the world a difference. 
But that same token, Self Wealth obviously still wins because it has that flat $9.50 rate. So even if you invest a million dollars, presumably um, you'd still get charged $9.50 unless there's some clause that I've missed in Self Wealth's PDS. <laughs> Before I go on further, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you're enjoying this video. And if you want to see more reviews, let me know what you'd like me to review. So a lot of brokers charge an inactivity fee. This is a fee that they charge you if you don't make a certain number of trades per year. So Comsec doesn't charge an inactivity fee on its Australian account. It does charge a custody type inactivity fee on its international share trading account. And you'll pretty much always get this fee um, on international or US trading accounts. So if you don't have an international share trading account open, or if you're not making any trades um, on it, you won't get charged that fee. And that's a really important consideration uh, because if you're only looking to invest long term, you're only looking to make one big investment in five years you don't want to get charged a monthly fee of 50 bucks or something like that okay so even though those two brokers are the most commonly compared to comsec there are a bunch of other brokers that you should probably take into consideration as well because as a matter of fact ten dollars in brokerage uh, might not sound like a lot but it's actually on the higher end of uh, brokerage fees in terms of um, what others charge in fact comsec and nabtrade in fact offer some of the most expensive of brokerage fees on the market. At the moment, the cheapest brokerage fees for Australian stocks on the market are about $5. Some of the brokers that offer those include Superhero, $5 flat fee. Open Trader also has brokerage fees starting at $5. IG has brokerage fees starting at $5, although there are caveats. And Stake also has brokerage fees of $3 now, just launched in 2021. Sharesies also offers a brokerage fee of 0.5% for Australian shares. Um, and they do allow you to invest in uh, any amount that you want. So you could invest just a couple of cents into an ASX stock if you wanted and just pay you know, a couple of cents in brokerage fees. It's worth pointing out that all of these brokers that I mentioned um, that offer these low fees aren't offering individual chess sponsored uh, shares. So they're all custody model brokers. So that may or may not be important to you. If it is, well, it's just something to take into consideration. It's also worth pointing out the minimum investment that you need for Comsec. So Comsec, like most brokers in Australia, require a $500 minimum into Australian shares. That's pretty much a standard up until 2020 when superhero broke that trend and offered australian shares of a hundred dollars as a minimum there are now a couple of other brokers on the market that are allowing you to invest in um, smaller amounts into asx shares so sharesies there's no minimum investment amount into asx shares uh, you can invest a couple of cents like i said stake is just about to launch asx share trading with ten dollar minimums but every other broker out there requires a minimum of five hundred dollars to start investing in ASX stocks. It's just a, it's a requirement of the ASX if you are to have um, chess sponsored shares and yeah, it comes down to the broker. Okay, so looking at the international brokerage fees uh, for Comsec, I can see here, so it's $19.95 for trades of up to $5,000, $29.95 for trades of up to $10,000, and then 0.31% for trades above ten thousand dollars that's particularly high because there are now a number of brokers that offer zero brokerage share trading platforms for either us stocks or global stocks these include ig cmc market stake offers zero brokerage uh, us stocks superhero also offers uh, zero brokerage uh, us stocks as well as etoro so they're particularly high when you're looking at the comparison with other brokers available on the market now now trade is similarly quite high. They offer $14.95 brokerage for trades of up to $5,000, $19.95 for trades over $5,000 to $20,000, and then 0.11%. If you were to compare Self Wealth here, well, they don't actually offer uh, global share trading outside of US stocks. They do offer US stocks and they charge $9.50 per trade for US stocks uh, in USD. Options trading fee, they charge $34.95 for up to $10,000 uh, options trades or 0.35% above that. That's um, kind of standard for Australian options. Um, for US options, that would be very high, but they don't offer US options, just ASX options. 
In Australia, um, the average is around 30. You, you do get a lot of brokers charging um, $25 to $30 for options trading. So $35 is relatively high. So now I'm gonna look at the features of Comsec to see whether or not those relatively higher brokerage fees are worth the cost. So Comsec does have a lot of good features. So like a lot of platforms, they offer a watch list option where you can get alerts. And then you've got your quotes and research tab, which gives you a good rundown of what's been happening in the market, including um, analysis reports. You get an ASX market update as well every day. And I love the fact that you can check out how individual sectors are doing as well. So for example, here I'm in the energy sector and I can see that the energy sector uh, is up 16% uh, month on month. And here you can also enter in a company. So if you're following an energy company, I'm just gonna enter in BHP. You can see how it compares to the market on average. So this is a great way to compare how a stock's uh, PE ratio, so price to earnings ratio, and uh, EPS growth compares to other major stocks in the market. Because of course the price to earnings ratio, which is a good measure of whether a stock is overpriced or underpriced, uh, is always relative to the sector that it's in. Okay, in the quotes section, you actually get broker ratings as to whether a stock is a buy, hold or a sell, very briefly. So the two major brokers that Comsec um, shows um, are Goldman Sachs and Morningstar. They give a rating from these two brokers and their analysis. Um, other brokers are kind of rounded up and you don't necessarily get the names of those brokers. So for example, in here, if I've typed in Afterpay, I can see that it has a pretty moderate rating. It's got um, seven strong buys on one buy. It's got six holds and it's got one sell. So a pretty good rating really. And then of course you can see here the individual ratings. Um, so Morningstar has rated it and overvalued. Here I can see any of the announcements that have gone through the ASX. I can see whether or not any dividends have been paid out or whether there are any, are any upcoming dividends. Afterpay doesn't pay dividends, so that's why it doesn't show. There's some really neat stuff in the tools section as well. So I'm on the interactive charting section. Um, you can see they've got technical analysis charts where you can add trend lines. Another tool that I really like on Comsec is that you have a stock screener option and an ETF screener as well. So in the stock screener section here, you can choose to look at stocks that match your strategy or match what you're trying to look for. So now I'm just gonna run through how you place a trade on Comsec and some of the options available to you. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll over to the trading tab, which is where you place your trades. It's pretty simple. Select buy. I'm going to say afterpay. And you can select here either the quantity of stocks that you want to buy, or you can set a price, like a value. So say I want to invest $5,000 into Afterpay, I could select to put $5,000 here, or I could say, no, I want 10 Afterpay stocks, um, which would come down to how much is one times, yeah, 10 times, so a thousand something. <laughs> My maths is amazing. So here on this main screen, it does let you either select a limit order or an at market order. If you select an at market order, it goes through at whatever price it's trading and when it's executed. So it's a little bit risky. Um, or you can put a price limit order. It's always a good idea just to put that limit order in just in case suddenly the stock price becomes very volatile. And you can also select what day you want this to expire at. So you could say either good for today, so whether the limit order reaches the price that you've set um, within that day, then it's okay. But say you want it to last for a week, then at any time during that week, if it hits that limit price, that order will be executed. So those are, of course, the two basic order types that you get on pretty much every online broker. So that at least is covered but it also has a very long list of conditional orders. So conditional orders are like advanced limit orders. This is one of the strengths uh, for Comsec because a lot of the cheaper brokers, a lot of the brokers with very low brokerage fees don't have these conditional order options. They'll usually just have a market order and a limit order. These conditional orders can be great if you want uh, more control over the order that you're carrying out. Um, so for example, 
So you can see here you've got falling sell, rising buy, falling buy. You've got uh, six of these conditional order types outside of the market order and limit order options. You've also got trailing, trailing orders, the trailing buy and trailing sell. So uh, what can be a little bit confusing is that all of these orders are often given different names by different brokers. So these orders help you to buy or sell when a stock is trending either up or down. So for example, if I was to select a falling buy order, this helps me to buy when a stock is dipping temporarily. So say I wanted to buy in at Afterpay, I've entered Afterpay here, and say I think that Afterpay is a good buy at around the $40 level, but I don't want to buy into the stock if it has completely crashed and it's never going to go back up again. So I just want to buy at the dip. I set a trigger price at 40, so that's when the order is triggered, it goes into effect, but it will only buy if the price goes back up again. So it won't buy if it goes to 40 and then continues going down. Uh, your order won't be carried out during that day. And you can do the same thing for a buy trend. So say you only want to invest in stocks that you think are going to trend upwards. You can set a rising buy price here. So say you think a stock could be trending in the future, like at some point in the future, a stock is going to shoot up, it's been um, underperforming for a long time, maybe it's a penny stock, but you think at some point in the future, it will go up, but you don't want to buy in until that happens because you're not really sure. You could set a price trigger here. So I've set that at 40. So it's triggered when it hits that point, but it doesn't buy unless it keeps going up. So one important feature for a lot of investors is to see live pricing on their platform. Um, live prices are quite difficult to get. Like if you were to search for um, Afterpay share price in Google, you'd see a 20 minute delayed share price. You wouldn't see the most current share price. Um, usually you have to pay to get live prices. Uh, the ASX charge uh, quite a lot of money for any platform or any individual to access live prices. So Comsec does have it, but it does charge you $82.50 a month. So not necessarily worth it for me. It might be worth it for someone else. It's pretty expensive. <laughs> You'd want to be trading a lot to make use of that $82.50. Okay, so in conclusion, what did I like? What didn't I like about Comsec? I'll start off with what I liked. I really liked the research tools of Comsec. I think it's among the best out there that I've seen, especially for Australian shares. I like the fact that I can integrate it with a bank account. Like if I'm with Combank, then I could um, see all of my accounts and um, platforms, including Comsec Pocket, um, all in the one spot. I can also transfer money immediately, which is really great. I like its list of conditional orders. That can be really useful when the market is volatile, particularly useful if the market is crashing just to take advantage of those short-term trends. I like its stock and ETF screener tools. They're really good. And the fact that you can compare your stock's PE ratio and um, other factors to the broader sector that it belongs in. I really like the fact that there are no account fees or an activity fees for the basic account. There are add-ons obviously like the live prices, which do cost a bit. Okay, so what don't I like so much? I don't like the fact that its fees are quite high. It's among the highest on the market for um, Australian shares. Um, there is that $10 brokerage fee for $1,000 trades, but you know it does jump up pretty significantly if you trade above that. And since your minimum order um, investment is uh, $500, you've kind of got a small gap to take advantage of that $10 brokerage fee. Otherwise it jumps up pretty quickly. I don't like the fact that the international share trading platform is separate from the Australian share trading platform. Um, when you look at it, you see them sitting as two separate accounts and in fact, the platforms look quite different because they white label their, their international brokerage account. They haven't actually created that themselves, which is why they're quite separate. Brokerage fees for international shares are really high compared to what else is out there in the market. Um, and they also have that inactivity fee for the international share trading account as well. Another point that I don't like is just the high fee to access their um, live data. Pretty high, not a fan. So do I think Comsec is worth it? It depends how you want to use your um, online broker and it depends how you want to use research. If you're really interested in getting high quality research and analysis tools, then Comsec is a pretty good way to go. It has charting tools, it has broker ratings, um, lets you compare. The research tools are solid. It's among the most solid 
of any broker that I've seen. That being said, it's not that's not the case for global shares. That's only for Australian shares. Like I said, the global share trading platform has totally separate tools and they're not as in depth as their Australian um, stock trading tools. The fact that you can open an account for free is great. I guess uh, at the end of the day, if you wanted to uh, use a broker that's less expensive, you could actually just open a Comsec account just for the research tools, which is exactly what I did quite a few years ago before I even started investing. I had a Comsec account, which I just use for research, but also keeping everything in one spot is really handy. So I've done a number of other reviews, including Comsec Pocket. I've done one on Rays and Superheroes, so you can check out those in the description below. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. If you didn't like it, let me know why you didn't like it. And if there are other platforms you want me to review, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll chase it up. Thanks so much guys, I'll see you next time.